Welcome to CMH Software's Constructor Training Series. In this video, we're going to cover using the test probe and also the troubleshooting mode. First, we'll cover the basic operation of the test probe. To get access to the test probe, you'll first need to turn the power on. Once the test probe is visible, you can click on it and you can move it around. You can hide the test probe by clicking on this X here, and you can also click on this icon on the toolbar to hide it and to also make it visible. You can also change the size of the test probe by going to the View menu and then Test Probe and then selecting the size that you want. To select the mode for the test probe, simply click on the button to select between power and continuity. We'll leave it in continuity for now. You can also change the audio level by clicking on that button as well. To connect the probes to the circuit, click on either the red or the green probe button down here. We'll go ahead and click on the red one first. Once you click on the button, you'll see boxes appear in the circuit that indicate where the probe can be connected to. We'll connect it here and demonstrate using the continuity mode by testing this wire section. Now we'll attach the green probe. As you can see by the red light coming on and also the audio tone that you can hear, this wire is good. To remove a probe, just click on the probe again. Then you can reattach it to any of the areas indicated by the boxes. You can also press the escape key and that will stop the probe attachment process completely. Another function of the two probe buttons down here is to allow you to scroll the diagram to the area that the probe is attached to. Let's go ahead and scroll the diagram so that the red probe is no longer visible. You'll notice that when a probe is attached to the circuit that a magnifying glass is shown on the probe button. That means that when we click it now, it will scroll the diagram to the location where the probe is attached. You can do this with both probes. This is a real handy and quick way to get back to the probe's location, especially when you have the zoom level of the diagram set high. When your project is in normal mode, and by normal I mean that it's not in troubleshooting mode, you really don't need a test probe at all. Not really. That's because when you energize the circuit in normal mode, you can see the power flowing through the wires. And you can also see all of the components changing state when they are clicked on, such as this emergency stop. And also when they react to the circuit itself, such as this M1 contact here. The test probe is most useful when your project is in troubleshooting mode. To set your project to troubleshooting mode, go to Options, Project Options, and then change the mode to troubleshooting. In troubleshooting mode, you can really see the difference when you energize the circuit. The most obvious thing is that you don't see any power flowing through the wires, at least not visually. But that doesn't mean that there isn't power there. Another big difference is that you do not see some components changing state. Some components, such as the start button though, they do visually change state when you click on it, but other components, such as this M1 contact, they do not. That's because in real life, you normally wouldn't have access to an individual contact on a relay, but you would have access to the start button. The same reasoning also applies to loads such as indicators, motors, and relays. In real life, you would be able to tell when an indicator is energized, and you would be able to tell when a motor is energized. But you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell when a relay coil is energized. Not just by looking at it, and that's why you can't see it here. But with a test probe, 
we can test for power on the coil. We'll set the mode back to power and then we'll connect the probes to the connecting wires of the coil. Right now we can see that there is power on the coil. Let's go ahead and push the stop button down and now we can see that there isn't any power on the coil. A good rule of thumb to follow as far as what components you can interact with and which ones you will see react to the circuit is that if you can interact with it in real life or you can see it react to a circuit in real life then you should be able to see it here while it's in the troubleshooting mode. This jog button is a good example. In real life you would be able to push the actual button part of the component which is represented with this part of the push button and when you do you can see it visually change state. But in real life you wouldn't be able to push on just this auxiliary contact part of this button and so you can't hear either. And when you push the button part of this component down you won't see the auxiliary contacts changing state either. The constructor has always had the ability to let you set the components that are used in a circuit as defective. This allows you to see how a defective component will affect the circuit's operation. Now with the addition of the troubleshooting mode we've enhanced it even more. All contacts, switches and push button control heads can now be set as defective contact stuck closed and defective contact stuck open. When you set the component as defective it will still visually appear correct for the state that it's in but electrically it will not be. For example let's set this local stop switch here to defective contact stuck open and then energize the circuit. Even though the contacts visually look closed here, the power does not run through it. Now we'll change it to defective contacts stuck closed and then we'll try it again. Now it appears to be working correctly because the power is flowing through it, but when we push on the button and open the contacts, the power still flows through it. That's because the defective modes affect it electrically and not visually. This makes the troubleshooting mode more realistic because as in real life you may be pushing on the button and it may appear to be working but electrically it is not. Let's do one more small example just to help clarify defective modes a bit more. This example will also be with the project mode set as normal. In this simple circuit we have one relay that is controlled by a normally open push button. The relay has one normally open contact that controls an indicator light. Okay nothing too complicated here. I like this kind of circuit. We push on the push button the CR1 relay energizes and its contacts close which energizes the indicator. Let's set the contact as defective contact stuck open now and try it again. Now when we push the push button down and energize the relay the power does not flow through the normally open contact even though it's showing that it is closing. But remember the project mode is still set as normal and so the program is showing you a lot of things that you won't see when it's in troubleshooting mode. To show the difference between normal and troubleshooting modes I've loaded the same circuit into two different constructor programs and I've set the one on the right to troubleshooting mode. None of the components in either program are set as defective. When I close the push button's contacts, the relay is energized, the contacts close, and the indicator comes on.
The difference is, is that with the diagram on the right, which is set to troubleshooting mode, you're only able to see the push button go down and the indicator come on. You didn't see the relay get energized or the contact close. That's because that's all you would normally get to see in the real world. Now I've set the normally open contact to defective contact stuck open. On the diagram on the left, we can already see what's wrong because the program is telling us. But the diagram on the right, which is set to troubleshooting mode, doesn't show us anything. So we can't really tell what's wrong just by looking at it. Another new feature that was added for troubleshooting is the addition of two defective connecting wire types. Defective solid and defective dashed. Defective wires are wires that are electrically open. Select the one that you want before adding the connecting wire to the drawing. When the project is in normal mode, the wire will have a visible break while in the design mode. But they will appear as solid wires when the power is turned on. In troubleshooting mode, the wires will appear as solid wires as well. When using the probe in continuity mode, it will not show continuity through a load at all. It will always show the load as open. However, if we set the defective mode for the load as defective shorted, it will show continuity through there. So when you determine that a component is defective, just what can you do about it? Well, just like you would in real life, you would replace it. To replace a defective component, you need to turn the power off. With the power off, anytime you place the mouse cursor over a component or wire, a box will appear around it. Just right click the mouse inside the box and you'll be given the option to replace the component with a new working component. Once you do, the component will no longer be defective. Anytime the project is in troubleshooting mode, a log file is kept of all of the activity. But the log is not accessible to anyone while it's in troubleshooting mode. The only way to view the log is to put the project back in normal mode, and then select the troubleshooting log tab in the second window. The log file will contain all of the activity for the test probe and also for any activity that was in the diagram. It will also include any information about components that had been replaced. Anytime the project is in normal mode, you can view a list which shows the components in the project that are currently set as defective. To view the list, just go to the View menu and then select Display Defective Symbol List. The list will display all components in the project with defective settings. Project options are items that get saved with the actual project file itself. And so anytime the file is loaded, those settings will be restored. That means if you set the project mode to troubleshooting and then save the project, the project will be in troubleshooting mode whenever it's loaded. If you create a project file that has been set to troubleshooting mode and then you give that project to someone else to work on, then any changes that they make to that project will need to be saved when they are finished. That is if you intend to view their work later. If it isn't saved, 
then any changes that were made to the project, such as replacing defective components, plus anything that was added to the troubleshooting log, it will all be lost. There are two ways to have the file saved. The first is to have the person using the project save the project themselves manually by going to File and then Save Project. The second way is to check this box that says Save File Changes. When this is checked, the file will automatically be saved for them and they won't have to do anything. If the project doesn't include using password protection, then anyone will be able to change the project options. And that includes setting the project mode to normal if it was originally set to troubleshooting. To prevent anyone from modifying your project file or from changing the project mode, you should always password protect it. To add password protection, go to the password area and check the box that says use password protection on this file. Then enter your password and then select how the password is to be used. The most common way would be to allow someone to load the project without knowing what the password is. That allows them to load and use the project based on the permission settings that you've assigned to the project and also the project mode. Anytime a project is password protected and the project mode is set to troubleshooting, the user will be prompted to enter the password before they can enter the project options. Without the password, the user can't get into the project options and make any changes.